So, okay, now we're going to get into today's class. Um, I'm rubbing my head. I heard a brother on the radio say, when a Negro rubs his head, he's lying. I said, dag, I'll just be a liar. What the hell is this? Uh, Negro say anything. Exactly. Give me Ciroc 26. Uh, we want to talk about liberation and racial ascendancy. I like that word. I saw that word, ascendancy. ascendancy. That ain't a uh, normal Negro word, so hey, I said, hey, I got hey. to use it. Dick and I thought, you ready? So that ain't a Negro word. Mm. Liberation and racial ascendancy. Now, you may ask yourself, well, it's always brought, race ain't in the Bible. Yeah, it is. Give me in Sirach 26, 20, 21. Let's start there. Sirach 26, verse 20. The, ra- the term race, as in ra- your ra- racial identity, is in the Bible. And the so, word is used. Sirach 26, verse 20. When thou hast gotten a fruitful possession through all the field, sow it with thine own seed, trusting in the goodness of thy stock. So thy race, which thou leavest, shall be magnified. Having the confidence of their good descent. Y'all see that? So that thy race shall be magnified. So that's why it's telling us deal with our own people. Deal with our own 12 tribes of Israel. And be confident in the race where you come from. So race is in the Bible. The churches have taught us it is not, but it is. Now, now, you young men, I want to talk to you young men for a second. We're seeing a lot of things in the news and many times we watch the news and we get angry. I get angry at things I see in the news. But there's a time and a place for everything. Sometimes it's best to be silent sometimes. Sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. And wait. What do I mean by that? Let me, let me help you all out here. Get, let me show you. The Most High has tried, not tried, the Most has directed us in his Holy Bible how to conduct ourselves. Give me First Peter's chapter 2. Let me help you a lot here. You young men, especially. You hot-headed young men who want to punch everybody in the face. It ain't always expedient to punch everybody in the face. You might get punched back. Harder. <laughs> then you'd be like, dang. You ever, you ever, you ever, I don't know how many of you ever got in a fight. You ever get into a fight and push a nigga and he don't budge? You better run. <laughs> You be that, like, oh, that's shoot. when you start sending ambassadors of peace. <laughs> <laughs> you better give him a hug, brother. You know I'm just joking with you. I didn't mean nothing by that push. That was a love tap, bro. You better know. <laughs> First Peter two. Let's start at verse thirteen. Peter try, Peter wants to save our lives and wants us to walk upright in this truth. Watch this. Go ahead. First Peter two thirteen. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Stop for whose sake? Now, what we're about to go over, brothers and sisters, Israelite camps will never teach this. How do I know? I used to be a part of many. All them camps out there, I know at least eight out of ten of them. Eight out of ten. And I know what they teach, and I know what they don't teach. I know what they will stand and affirm, and I know what they will avoid. Why? Because I avoided it. Because I was, no, you don't need that. Forget that. Read it again. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. For whose sake, brothers? Now, you might right now, some of you might be angry. I don't, I don't really accept that. I hate the white man's the devil. Yeah, he is the devil. But the Bible says submit yourself. Read it again. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of, of man for the Lord's sake. Go ahead. Whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors. Now, the king as supreme or unto governors. That's not, I heard, I did hear one brother attempt to break this down. He said, that's Israel. That ain't Israel, brothers. We were not the king at this time, nor the governors. You had Pontius Pilate. You had, what's the other name? Herod. We was not the king or the governor. Don't listen to these knucklehead Israelites. I, I, can't, I, I, I do love our people. I do. And I do pray that we can all come to common ground and they'll be there. You ain't got to come with me because you know people got pride. I don't want to join with you niggas. Okay. It takes, Just teach right. That's right. what I ask. It takes discipline to follow this Bible. It, it takes does. discipline to follow what we're reading here. And because a lot of our people don't have that discipline, then therefore they make excuses mm-hmm. and say that the Bible ain't saying what it's saying. Exactly. Simply to fit their uh, inability to be disciplined to follow the scriptures. Exactly. Read that again. 
Verse 13. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. Stop. It says for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. I want y'all to really meditate on that. So the apostle Peter, remember who's speaking through Peter? Christ. This is meant to save not just us, but our sons and our daughters. Because if you look on the TV, it's many things you see, like Ferguson. We, a lot of us was upset what we witnessed out there in Ferguson. And what was the latest one where the young boy was walking at a knife, but he was walking away from the cop, and this one cop ran up and went, pow, pow, pow. Y'all remember his name? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Just started, he shot the whole clip into the young man and lied and said the young man was, came at him with the knife, but the video showed he was walking away. So stuff like that will make infuriate you. I don't think we don't have feelings. We do. But we understand that there is a God. Okay, read on. Verse 15. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. There's a thought that Israel is nothing but a black Ku Klux Klan. We are not a black... Brothers, we are not a black Ku Klux Klan. I just want you to know that now. We have never lynched anybody. We have never dragged anybody with a car. Chain, remember the brother in Atlanta? Mm -hmm. That they dragged... James Bird, thank you. We've never done any of that. We've never stolen no brother's land or anything. Huh? Can y'all say it on the mic? Burned a cross in their backyard. We didn't do that either. That's it. Laquan McDonald, is that his name? The brother that was shot? Laquan McDonald. Thank you. Thank you. You giving a definition of Ku Klux Klan. That's what you give. We, that give us the name of Ku Klux Klan. We don't have, we have not done the definition of Ku Klux Klan. Exactly. In our teaching, watch this. Jump up, Isaac, Captain Isaac, to verse 12. I want all y'all to watch this. Verse 12. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. The Gentiles here are Israelites. That's what these, as we read in this verse, it's going to prove that these Gentiles are Israelites. Go ahead. That whereas they speak against you as evildoers. Do our people that don't understand the truth speak evil against us as evildoers? Yes. Watch this. They may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. That's how we know the Israel. Regardless of what they're saying, oh, you guys are about race only. You're about the 12 tribes. You ignore everybody else. Yeah, that's true. But we're not, because here come a question. People, this is what they say on the street, Malachi. You might know what I'm talking about. You'll be teaching, and somebody will come up. So if you saw a little white baby, um, give me what they say, a little white baby, um, Laying in the street, uh, needing help or dying or, a, let's say, a dog bit. I don't know. You wouldn't help? They wait for your answer. Camera's right there. Here's a question. When we were in Persia and Mordecai heard the plot against the Persian king, he overheard it. What did our forefather do? He told and saved the king's life. As a result, what happened? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Who knows the history? That uh, shows me right there that a lot of y'all don't read the history of your forefathers. We just, that holiday just passed. So y'all have not read it. Let me hear somebody. You, read the, you, 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 yes, yes. What happened? What happened? The, uh, the Persian king, he checked the chronicles. And he uh, seen that um, Mordecai wasn't rewarded. What now was right? What Mordecai wasn't rewarded, and what? And he didn't. Uh, he didn't get no um, no reward. And so what happened? So he rewarded him. All right. Okay. He uh, he had him ride on a horse through the city or something. Exactly. Uh, he, he he rewarded. Wait, wait a minute. So was Mordecai a coon? No, he, he wasn't was a coon. A coon. <laughs> Mordecai followed the same example. When you look at Joseph in Egypt, when he had opportunity to commit adultery with Potiphar's wife, Egyptians didn't marry ugly women. How do, how do we know the Egyptians didn't marry ugly women? No, not just Nefertiti, something else. Something that Abraham said about Sarah. 
It might have been Abraham, might have been Isaac. One of them two. They said something. Yes, L let me hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something they said. When Abraham said uh, to Sarah to tell him that you're my sister because you look so good, you would get me in trouble. Right. right. He said the Egyptians will see how beautiful you are and kill me. So he knew them just was going to take you from me. He said, just tell them you're my sister. That's what he, and Isaac did the same thing. So the Egyptians wasn't running around with busted women. Now, why did I bring that up? Why did I say that? They knew beauty because their, because their women were beautiful. Oh, Joseph. Joseph. Right. That was the point. That was the point. So Joseph could have committed adultery. He said, no, you are my master's wife. I'm not going to do that. Then when opportunity came, remember the dreams people was having, he was interpreting? Then when it came time to save Egypt, Joseph said, well, I have a plan to save Egypt. Joseph could have been a nigger coon and said, to hell with you, Egypt. You all die together. Watch some of these Israelites out here on YouTube. They will do that. I'm telling you, be mindful. Joseph said, do this, do that, and we can save Egypt alive. That, and, and Pharaoh obeyed what Joseph said. And as a result, he elevated Joseph second in command. And y'all with me? Everybody understand history? My point is, when you read our forefathers, they, they was not... Can you say it on the mic so people can hear what you... They were not niggas. <laughs> they were dealing with the most high on a higher sense above the, above the level where most of us deal at. They, exactly. can't see, they can't see doing things like this as aren't. Exactly. As going along with the most high, they can't see that. They don't see the bigger picture. Exactly. This is why, when you read about Christ, what did Pontius Pilate say about Christ? Anybody remember? He said, I find no fault with this man. We have to come to the point where the nation say, I don't find no fault with these guys. We got to be mindful and clear. Read the verse again, verse 12. Verse 12. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Now, we do talk about smiting the nations. We are going to smite the nations when you read Isaiah, can we get that? Isaiah 60 and 12. I want y'all to see something here. Isaiah 60, verse 12. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. When Israel, brothers, listen good to what I'm saying. I want all you teachers to understand. When we get in power under Christ, when we confront all, and we will confront all the nations, they will be given opportunity to surrender and obey these laws or not. Read it again. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. So we're going to give them a chance. You, try, you Japanese, you will bow down to the true king of kings and obey these laws or not. The choice is yours. We're going to send, an, uh, what do they call it, an ambassage. Is that what it's called? Yeah, yes, sir. An ambassador. Is that what it's called? Yes, That's what nations do. Y'all seen 300, they will send an ambassador. Our ambassador, we're going to send an ambassador, going to be bad. Because our ambassador is going to have power. They ain't going to kick him into no hole either. That ain't happening. <laughs> exactly. So what I want y'all to see out of that, we ain't going to, our kingdom is not going to be an insane kingdom talking about, kill, kill everybody. That ain't happening. Brothers, we need slaves in the kingdom. Yes, We're going to give them opportunity to submit and obey. That's the uh, proper thing to do. And we want them not to submit. I hope they don't submit because I really don't like them. <laughs> hey, it's written in here that, that, that a lot of them not going to submit. That's the right. reason why the most I said they shall be utterly wasted. They, them scriptures in here is because you're going to get a lot of rebellion. That's, that's going right. to be. They want to test us. They right. want to they, test they're us. They're going to have to test the power, and they have to be made examples for the rest of them. Look at those niggas. What they think they're going to do? You going, man? We somebody call fire from heaven and burn them up down there. Make the earth open up beneath their feet. Hey, we're gonna have one of our babies to call the fire down. <laughs> Imagine that. He's a whack. Call the fire. <laughs> And I bet that's going to be Hebrew in that yeah. day. That's going to be he Hebrew. Gonna he go, Poof. <laughs> so see what that little baby did? <laughs> Real quick, get on um, 2nd Maccabees uh, 4. About how, how, how righteous our forefathers were and how they conducted themselves. 
in so much that they had the nations defend them, who were our enemies at the time. Second Maccabees 434, there was a man named Menelaus, and there was a man named Onias. Onias, Onias was righteous. Menelaus wanted him out the way to take his place. So he um, spoke to a man named Andronicus. Watch what he has him do. 434. Second Maccabees. Second Maccabees 434. Wherefore, Men Menelaus, taking Andronicus apart, prayed him to get Onias into his hands. So Menelaus asked Andronicus to kill Onias for him so he could take his place as leader. Go ahead. Who being persuaded thereunto and coming to Onias in deceit, gave him his right hand with oaths. And though he were suspected by him, yet persuaded he him to come forth of the sanctuary. So when Onias do something was wrong, but he said, ah, it shouldn't be, that, no, be a problem. So Andronicus gained his trust. Ended up killing him. Go ahead. Whom forthwith he shut up without regard of justice. That means he killed him without, for no reason. Go ahead. For the which cause not only the Jews. Not, so when Andronicus killed Onias. Go ahead. Read again. For the which cause not only the Jews, but many also of other nations took great indignation. He pissed everyone off when Andronicus killed a Jew. Go ahead. Watch this. And were much grieved for the unjust murder of the man. All Israel and the other nations were mad that Onias was killed for no reason by Andronicus. Go ahead. And when the king was come again from the places about Cilicia, the Jews that were in the city and certain of the Greeks that... Uh, certain of who? And certain of the Greeks Go ahead. that abhorred the fact also... That were mad also. Go ahead. Complained because Onias was slain without cause. They complained to the king. Why? This is King Antiochus. Read on. Therefore, Antiochus was heartily sorry and moved to pity and wept. Wait, whoa, stop. This is a heathen now. Crying that Onias was killed. Yeah, read again. Therefore, Antiochus was heartily sorry and moved to pity and wept because of the sober and modest behavior of him that was dead. Because of the what? Because of the sober and modest behavior of him that was dead. That goes back to that good conversation in Peter. Go ahead. And being kindled with anger. And being so and he got so mad about it. Go ahead. Forthwith, he took away Andronicus his purple and rent off his clothes, and leading him through the whole city unto that very place where he had committed impiety against Onias. There slew he the cursed murderer. Thus the Lord rewarded him his punishment as he had deserved. Yeah, they just had him taken to the place where he killed Onias and killed him in the exact same place. Yeah. That shows you that our conduct is can can um give us a reputation where people will, will side with us even our enemies will side with us yeah, yeah. that's what psalmist said in proverbs 16 verse 7 if your ways please the lord your yeah. enemies will be at peace with you yeah i mean then the scripture you went out they're showing that the brother was in a good behavior he was a good man where his name went bell among the other nation right. for being a good man sober he was he always a man that's focused about his people then when they heard that that of that man everybody saw it, man Exactly. Get Acts 23. Now, many of y'all, or if you have not read the book of Acts, you need to. Because in order to understand the epistles of Paul, you have to read the book of Acts. Because all the epistles of Paul are based upon the book of Acts. You realize there's a lot of Israelites who don't realize that basic truth because they say Paul was the 13th apostle and Paul is a heretic. Don't listen to Paul. Well, these brothers and sisters have obviously never read the book of Acts. Okay. Now, when we read Acts 23, I want to start at verse 19. There was a plot the Jews had against the apostle Paul to kill him. Paul's nephew overheard the plot. Start at verse 19. Let's read what happened. Acts 23, verse 19. Then the chief captain took him by the hand and went with him aside privately and asked him, What is that thou hast to tell me? Now, the chief captain is a chief captain over the Roman centurions. Okay. Listen good. Meaning today you will call them police officers. Everybody, I hate cops. I hate cops. They make me sick. Okay, let's read on. And he said, the Jews have agreed to desire thee that thou wouldest bring down Paul tomorrow into council, as though they would inquire somewhat of him more perfectly. But do not thou yield unto them, for there, for there lie in wait for him of them more than 40 men, which have bound themselves with an oath, that they will neither eat nor drink till they have killed him. And now are they ready, looking for a promise from thee. So the chief captain then let the young man depart and charged him. See thou, tell no man that thou hast showed these things to me. And verse 23, and he called unto him two centurions, saying, 
Make ready 200 soldiers to go to Caesarea, and horsemen three score and ten, and spearmen 200 at the third hour of the night, and provide them beasts that they may set Paul on, and bring him safe unto Felix the governor. Do y'all see what happened? That was a police escort. <laughs> Paul had a police escort so that the wicked Israelites wouldn't put him to death. All of this, because when you read Acts, these centurions love Paul. Not that Paul was a coon. Paul conducted himself in a way so you know, I like this guy. He wasn't one of, yo, I hate you. I wish you dead, nigga. The apostles was not rolling like that. Go ahead. What are you going to say? Read verse 16 real quick and 17. Verse 16. Let's see how this happened. Now, let's see if Paul said, you know what? I ain't going to do nothing. I'm going to sit by and just speak and he said, say the name 80 million times. It'll fix itself. Read this verse. Verse 16. And when Paul's sister's son heard. Nephew, this is Paul's nephew. Heard of their lying in wait. He went and entered into the castle and told Paul. Then Paul called one of the centurions unto him and said, Bring this young man unto the chief captain, for he hath a certain thing to tell him. What did Paul do? What did Paul do? He did what no, was saying. It, right? He snitched. He said, Tell, listen, go tell the cops what you just told what you told me just now. <laughs> he didn't say, Mind your business. I'm the, I'm the man of the Lord. I say the name, I'll be all right. That's not what he did. He said, Go and tell the law enforcement what you heard. That's what he said. Now, this is another level, because what we're touching on, you, most of us grew up in a, a low base, ignorant, I hate everybody, I hate myself because my gums are black. I hate myself. I can't stand it. So we just, we grow up like that. So now we come into this truth, we have to change, we have to be born again. In other words, we have to be born again. I want everybody to understand, we must restore in our people a knowledge and practice of their history. We got to restore unto them their culture through education, and what? Give them the sense. Them the sense. We got to give them good sense. And we got to do this through various cultural art forms, whether it's uh, video, radio, music, uh, whatever. Whatever it is. Israel must never become of a group of black comedic militants. Did I say that right? Israel, the nation of Israel must not become a group of Black comedic Israelite. What is it? Militant. Well, wait a minute now. <laughs> I got to qualify that word militant. A military is set up to defend a particular, is to defend its own nation. Who are these militants being militant against? Other brothers. Right. So they're not no military. They're a bunch of niggas. That's what they are. Just, just call it what it is. They're not no damn military. Military protects protects its own nation from outside nations. Exactly. Um, Israel must never become a group of verbal. I'll use this term. Verbal militants. Verbal militants where your big mouth replaces big actions. And when I say big actions, I mean solutions. You, Your mouth does not substitute solutions. It must be delivered by works. Your works will speak volumes for you. Uh, like the scripture said, can you give me that in, uh, give me a uh, second Corinthians. I want to start there. I want to start there. Big actions are called solutions. That's called, when you just argue and scream on people, that's called, pass. I read this in a book. I had to write it down. Passive non-resistance. Let me say it again. When you just got a big mouth with no actions behind you, it's called passive non-resistance against oppression. The white men, for example, the, your children are in school. We hate you. Your school system is crap. Mm -hmm. Then somebody says, well, why don't you make your own school? I ain't going to do that. Tell them what you out there running your mouth for. You lock up black people. You lock up black all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't you? Remember what Giuliani said to Eric Dyson? Yes. He tore him up. Now, I love Eric Dyson. You know what was heavy about that? I got to let you say your part, but go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, I Eric Dyson is one of the most articulate, well-spoken brothers of the century. He used some 13-letter words. I mean, what the hell are you talking about? But anyway, he was against, he's against police brutality, as are anyone, all of us. But Giuliani, ex-mayor Giuliani, said, all right, you're against police brutality. You don't want police in the, where, where black people live. Okay. How about this? Why don't you police yourselves and we'll pull back and leave you alone? He 
see what he did, but he put the job right in his lap. He said, okay, you hate all of these things here? Why don't you be responsible and fix your own self? Right. That's what he did. And he shut them down. And you hear crickets. This is what all of us, Israel, you're not, IUIC, I want all you men to understand this. Don't just have a big mouth with no solutions. We can't roll. When Christ and the apostles spoke, they came with solutions, okay? We don't want black men locked up. Okay, let's teach them the laws so that they know how to conduct themselves. What we just read in the book of Peter's, didn't we just read the book of Peter? Where it tells us how to, that alone, don't, how many, we read what, two verses in Peter? It will, if young men apply that, it will prevent at least three quarters of them from going to jail. Deuteronomy 21, son of 18. Deuteronomy 21, verse 18. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastened him will not hearken unto them, then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of his city and unto the gate of his place. And they shall say unto the elders of his city, This our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he died. So that's what our forefathers do back in the days. You understand? Under Christ, you can repent and change from that. But the reason why they did that is why. Keep on reading. So shalt thou put evil away from go. among you. So if we want evil away, away, away from our community, we got to, these, these wicked, rebellious men got to go. Right. And when IUIC speak up against it and say, listen, these wicked drug dealers, murderers, they got to repent or get right. You know, you can't have, you can't be mad at us for that. Because that's how we're going to change our community. That's how we're going to put away evil from amongst us. By getting rid of these wicked men. Is that it? They repent and do what this Bible say? Or they could go and get caught up in Esau court system. You understand? My point was, you brothers better repent. Because they are, you're destroying your people. Now, they all, everyone can justify themselves. Meaning, okay, I sold drugs because I want to make money. I'm poor, whatever. Brothers, Esau sets traps up in our communities. Um, poverty, that's a trap, okay? All of these things, it's a trap. Or drugs is another trap. They bring the drugs in. Guns all in the community, that's a trap. The Bible is meant to open our eyes to see the trap, avoid the trap, and deal with our people. So our job is to teach this Bible so our people can see and repent. That's what the Bible is for. We see Esau's the devil. We see that trap over there. We see the trap back there. We see the trap over there. Brothers, those are traps. Avoid those traps. Okay? Come back and learn this. You men understand what I'm saying? That's the reason why the program of this Bible is so important. Because if we would behave like a real nation, we don't have to resort to such things like what we're talking about. Selling drugs and the rest of these things here. You would have, you would have your own system where people you can employ your own people. That discipline has to be taught, and that comes out of this Bible. But because we have not learned that, because we have not, as a nation, we have not learned to, 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 uh, to, deal with, to deal with the ills of our society, our people spill over into other things and get caught out there because there's nothing for them by the men that's supposed to be running things. Exactly. Right. You, you all know if, 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 was, if not for us, this whole court system and so forth, a lot of people going to be out of job. I was watching a video Laba had on YouTube last night. And, yo, listen, he was making some good point. If, 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 it's not, if we wasn't so caught up in so much wickedness and sin, you understand? Because believe it or not, we are not a righteous and holy people. Brothers going to rob you and kill you on the street for $20, for $50, for a gold train. You understand? When these things happen, who are you going to go to for help? Can you come to us and say, um, brothers, can you all help us? Yeah, we could but do so much. You understand? Who you got to go to? You got to go to, you're going to go to Esau. You understand? That's the one who you're going to go to. The same way how Paul, Paul tell his nephew, yo, go tell Esau what these niggas trying to do to me. They want to kill me. The same way. If you find out somebody trying to kill you, what are you going to do? You're going to go to the police and report it. So these same men that talk in these things, you know, they hypocrites, man. Hey, get Micah 2 and 8. Let me say this real quick. In Chicago, y'all remember this. Years ago, we talked about Detroit 300. Remember them? 
when y'all go home, when you get it, Google Detroit 300. The police could not solve a murder where it was a black woman in the car, a young boy was killed. The Detroit 300, all black men, they said, well, we're going to help y'all out. They got these black, two black women, they put them in a garage, and they interrogated them. I forget for how long. Till they finally got certain answers. The two black women got other black women and got a lawyer and said, these Detroit 300 uh, harassed us. Now, meanwhile, these women were involved in a murder. Mm -hmm. They filed a lawsuit against the Detroit 300. I'm waiting to see that now. They're keeping it real quiet. And then they got the federal government involved to go against the police department for allowing these black men to to try to fix their their own problems. I want you to see the evil behind it. Murder involved. Black women got involved in the murder. Went to got a lawyer who went to the federal government against the police department who allowed these three the Detroit three hundred to police themselves. You got to let that marinate on yeah, your brain. Yeah, you got to really think about bit, it because th- there was too much that went out there. You got to let that rest on your head a little bit. Yes, and, and absorb that thing. Nick Rose, get, get Mike a two and eight <laughs> because we may say, watch this, brothers. The white, the, re- the white man is the devil. He's the one that makes us steal. Okay. In the book of Micah, chapter 2, verse Esau eight. was not in power here. Read that. Even of late, my people is risen up as an enemy. He pull off the robe with the garment from them that pass by, securely as men averse from war. So we were robbing each other back then of their clothes, their shoes. We were stealing. The white man's little system was not set up then. That was wicked black men robbing other black men. I want your men to understand that we got, we can't be passive, passive non-resistance against oppression, which means just talk, all talk, but no solution. Can you get 2 Corinthians 12, 19? We cannot be about debate. For some reason, people think debate is good. Debating each other is not necessarily a good thing all the time. Sometimes it's a waste of daggone time because at the end of the debate, what is the, what is the solution? My information against your information. I got deep scholarship, brother. 2 Corinthians 12, 19 and 20. Again, think ye that we excuse ourselves unto you? Now, some debates, I, I don't mind like when... You brothers debated Christians. I like that because the debate for that was meant to get them to repent, That's a to purpose. show our people that Christianity is not the way. There's so there was a purpose. It. By, it wasn't just, I'm smarter than you. That type of debate like you see in the Israelite comedic community. Read this now, Captain. Again, think ye that we excuse ourselves unto you? We speak before God in Christ, but we do all things, dearly beloved, for your edifying. For I fear, lest when I come, I shall not find you such as I would, and that I shall be found unto you such as you would not, lest there be debates, envyings, wraths, strifes, backbitings, whisperings, swelling, and tumults. Notice the word, the words he lumped together. Lest there be debates, envyings, wraths, strifes, backbitings, whisperings, swellings, and tumults. Paul is letting you know that debates falls in those categories when it serves no purpose. You just debating scholarship is a waste of time. What is the solution behind this? What is the purpose? Just a, I look smart and you look dumb. I get paid. <coughs> yeah, we're going to make three grand at the end. This is a waste of time, and it is not of the most high in God. Get Proverbs 25.9. It is not of the most high God. Proverbs 25.9. <coughs> the book of Proverbs, chapter 25 and verse 9. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself and discover not a secret to another. Who can explain that? There's a precept that explains that. Debate thy cause to your neighbor with himself and discover not a secret to another. It's explaining. There's a precept. First, I want to see if you understand it because some people use that to say it's, we justify just arguing back and forth. Yes, Yes. Shalom. If you have a problem with your brother or sister, go to him or her. Exactly. Get that in Matthew uh, 18, 15. 
That is the precept. That's what exactly what it's talking about. Matthew 18, 15, write that down, is the precept for Proverbs 25, verse 9. Matthew 18, verse 15. Moreover, thy brother shall trespass against thee. Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But exactly. It, that was it. So, just standing on the street corners, brothers, with no solution, you railing against Esau's uh, system that is set up, but you, as an Israelite, you have no solutions? That's called passive non-resistance against oppression. Write that down. Passive non-resistance against oppression. It means you're worthless. You're a waste of time. That's what Giuliani did to uh, Eric Dyson. And I love the brother. He said, okay, police yourselves. Now what? Now what, nigga? You hear crickets. Cricket, cricket, cricket. I don't know mm -hmm. cricket sound. But that's what you hear. Because mm -hmm. there's no solution. What? Okay, stand up for yourself. Take care of your own wife and your own kids. Get them off welfare. They're not black men. Oh, every black man says, oh, uh, um, Go to what is that called when you're the kids? Uh, <laughs> child support is wicked. Okay, it's wicked. It's a wicked system. Okay, then. Take care of your kids then. Take care of your kid. Do you realize what an insult that is? Here's your child and a damn white man making you pay for it. I can't. That's. That's an insult. I, I, can't, I can't even swallow that. I can't even imagine how stupid that is. Somebody have to force me to take care of my own child? Exactly. Hey, and what, it, uh, and what has happened a lot of times, a lot, a lot of brothers, they're going to have sex with a woman, get her pregnant, then leave her. Mm -hmm. and, and the woman, what she do, she go to the city for help. And the city's going to say, okay, we're going to put you on public assistance and so forth. But who name on that bird paper the that name on that bill paper, the father, listen, we automatically put it him on, on um, child support. Mm -hmm. You exactly. know, so the state automatically put the man on child support where he got to take care of his kid. Exactly. That's how sick, that's how Esau get down. So the most I put the spirit on Esau to force you you men to take care of your kid if you don't want to do it. Right. That, that's what the scriptures that I was, that I was quoting. Get, that's all talking about that. Get 1 Timothy 5 and 8. The Bible gives you all the answers. No, whether or not you like it or agree with it or not, it don't matter a hill of beans. As Israelites, we're going to stand and do what this Bible says. You don't want to be paying child support? Then how about you find a woman whose mind is like your own, loves you, and is going to keep these... How about you brothers do that first? Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Oh, no. Oh, no. But here's what God says. 1 Timothy 5 and 8. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. You hear what God says? So now God set up the white man to force black men to take care of their black kids. And we get so mad, we look for cases. Now, there are a few outrageous cases, like where a, a woman will sit back and go, I don't know who the baby daddy is. I'm going to put your name on it. And now you got to pay the child support. Now, that's wicked as hell. But guess what, brothers? That's one out of a right. million cases. Exactly. All the other cases is men sitting back. Mm -hmm. You are the father. Exactly. <laughs> That's why Esau gets rich off our own immorality. Because we are, we, you might not like what I'm about to say. As a whole, we are immoral. We want to have sex with no responsibilities. Then when we get caught and busted, not a white man, the devil. He the devil. But it's your kid. It's your kid. Bishop. Y'all see my face, right? Y'all probably what the hell's wrong with y'all's face? I thought you, you had gas. Like <laughs> the, what you said gave me. Well, listen. <laughs> read that thing again, what you just read. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Did you read that out of a Bible? Yes, sir. Okay. You got Israelites that are mad about child support. I find that troubling. They're reading the Bible and they got a problem with the, what the Bible says. But maybe I'm missing something. Did I miss something? Can you help me? I love you. I had to go to the bathroom. Yeah, yeah I love you. <laughs> they have, they, they say that Esau is extorting Jake by through child support, yet they themselves are extorting Jake with tithes. That's a prime example of hypocrisy. You understand? If Esau, when you read the scriptures, Israel had a treasury for women, widows, and, and fatherless children. A treasury. You know what Israel did, Israel did with that money after, after a while? They did to that money? They started to spend it on themselves rather than give it to the widows and the fatherless children. Fatherless children are children who don't have fathers. 
like men who take care of their kids, men who make kids and don't take care of them. So back in the past, Israel had money to take care of them. East, the most I said, okay, well, since y'all won't get the money, I'm going to have Esau do that for them instead. I'm going to have Esau provide money for fatherless children. And, and, just, and just since you guys are so rebellious, I have them extort you at the same time to get your mind right. Can That's we, what he did. Can we read the scripture to prove what you just said? Get Baruch 3. Mm-hmm. Is it Baruch 3 what yep. I'm thinking? Yeah, huh? No, no, I don't no, want no, that. No, no, no. You, you're right. Baruch. It's in Baruch. There's one in Baruch. But one in Baruch. I want Baruch 3 and 8. This is the proof. Subject. Everything Esau has set up is a result of our sins. Y'all ain't going to like this. You brothers who are still in your carnal Negro mind, you going to get mad at this. Bishop, and that's when they say in the video that you tear men down, that you tear black men down by telling them to get jobs and take care of his kids. This no. Israelite cap saying that. Well, no, hey. We're going to clear that language up. Hey, we, don't, we, man, don't, <laughs> we don't tear. Hey, the man is the leader for the nation. <laughs> right. You understand? So that's why we get... That's why we come hard on you men. Exactly. That's why we come down hard on you and tell you you got to step your game up. That's right. You understand? Because once you fall in line, your wife is going to fall in line. Mm-hmm. You understand? That's why IUIC is hard on you brothers, man. Because you all are the leader for the nation. That's right. Just consider this as medicine to, hey. to bring you out of Negro into manhood. Understand something, brothers. You must lead by example. Understand that. Christ said, let, men, let your light shine that men may see your good works, not your great speech. So you can't just speak. Young men coming in this truth, they want to see an example. Just like when Paul said he did not use um, the power of, because he said he could have taken the church's money. He said, but I'm not going to use that power. He said, I'm going to set myself as an example to young men coming in. They can see I'm working. That's why everybody up here worked. Everybody up here works, and none of y'all can say, you don't work. And guess what? When we came in the truth, the older brothers, like Masha, Yaquab, they had already retired. So we understood they didn't work, so we helped provide for them. But you young men coming in, you need examples. So that's why we all work. That's why we set an example for all of you. Read that for me. Baruch 3 and 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity where thou hast scattered us. For reproach and a curse. Here it comes. And to be subject to payments. And to be subject to payments. Why? According to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our God. That's the proof. According to everything that's set up in this system is because of our sins. You don't want to take care of your kids according to 1 Timothy 5 and 8. God says, tell a white man to create a system of child support. Bam! Oh, shoot! You don't want to pay your offerings to the temple? Have them set up a taxation and force them to pay taxes. Bam! And we all cry, I got to pay taxes. Exactly. You didn't want to pay for the priest in the past. Remember, we were supposed to pay 10% to the priest. Exactly. We didn't want to do that. So now the Lord said, you're going to pay it to your enemies. For the punishment of evildoers. There's the point right there. According to all our iniquities. That's something we, we hear it, we got to absorb it and accept it. And change why can't we change? Why is it hard for a black man or black woman? To, you know what? Let me get myself right. I ain't right. Yeah, the white man, the devil, but I understand why God set him up over me. I understand why I'm in captivity. Let me change. Mm-mm. Some of you, no, no, I'm not hey, changing. Hey, Elder, so what's what's the solution for brothers to to keep be not on child support? What's the solution for Esau not to put him on child support? <laughs> Take care of your kids. That's it. Take right. care, Take of, care your of your kid. Right. We well, read it. We read it. All, right. All of this puts pressure, beautiful pressure, wonderful pressure, puts pressure on the on the man, the black man, and the Israelite man to build and do something for his nation. That's, That's right. what it does. It puts pressure. It gets you off of that damn couch. It gets you off of your backside, makes you provide and uh, create a world for your people so they don't be out here in the cold. Gets James chapter 2. So we as Israelites, we got to understand that um, talk is cheap, in other words. Talk without solutions, okay? And the Apostle James discussed that with us, explained that, I should say. James 2.14. James 2 and verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? So a lot of us in here say we had faith, but we have no works to prove it. Go ahead. Can faith save him? Can faith save you? Go ahead. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, 
Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? What does it profit? Somebody comes in, somebody in here and says they need help. And then we say, oh, brother or sister, be thou warmed and filled. That goes back to what Deacon Asa was bringing out also about the monies that come in is necessary for the betterment and help of the people of the body of Israel. Okay? We can't, if nothing's coming in, we can't put nothing out. Y'all understand that? Somebody said, I need help. Then you, and we are well aware of those that try to use Israel. Brothers, don't, could brothers come up and say, watch this brother, watch this sister, they're trying to use Israel. Anybody that tried, the most high is going to use, the most high uses all of us. Nobody's going to use the most high. We know the brothers and sisters who are putting their hand to the plow, who's helping in this truth, and those that just sit there and always got their hand out at the end of class. We see you. We know you are the grimy, no good. Everybody in here ain't right. Yeah, I'm gonna say it again. Everybody in here ain't right. Some are just sitting here, wait till after class. I'm like, brother, can you help me? And this brother or sister has not done nothing. Y'all know what I'm talking about in Israel. Nothing. They won't sweep a floor. They won't paint a wall. They won't make a sandwich. They just sit there and look. Mm -hmm. I just need my light bill paid, nigga. I'm in. I'm in. I ain't gonna name the state. I was. I was in one state. Right after class, the sister came up. Ah, I need three hundred dollars. I said, and I, I'm sitting there. I'm like, whoa. Who's the sister? She must do some mighty works up in here. They said, no, she just do this every week. She don't help nothing. I said, don't give the whole nothing. <laughs> now, am I getting mad? Get mad. I don't care. <laughs> but it's about putting in work. You ain't putting in no work. You ain't helping in this truth. You just sitting there as a, what do they call it, a leech? Yeah. Get out of here. A parasite. a parasite. Read on, Captain. Verse 17. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead. Faith without works, brother, is dead. That's why I get on these faith only. I call them faith only. I just got faith. I ain't got no works to just substantiate it, but I just say I got it. Go ahead. Being alone. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by you ever my see a works. brother that said they could drive a car, and they get in the car, and they crash? <laughs> brother, you can't drive, bro. Stop, stop. Or the brother that says they could kung fu fight didn't get beat up. You got to watch these brothers. <laughs> Where's your works at, bro? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Right. Just believing that there's one God is nothing because Satan believes there's one God. The demons believe there's one God. There should be a difference between you and the demon. Go ahead. But wilt thou know? O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Y'all see that? So with Abraham's faith, he showed his faith through his works. Go ahead. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Come on. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot. A heathen. Now this is a heathen woman. Go ahead. Justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. Right. That was at the walls of Jericho. She saved the Israelite messengers alive. She said, remember me and my family when you take over Jericho. She says, please don't kill us. And they honored that and said, okay, you helped us. We're going to do right by you. See, we wasn't a, a group of wicked, grimy Negroes. When a nation like with Rahab, Rahab that's her name, Rahab, Rahab, how you say it? She did right by us. We looked out for her in her house. That's how we right. did. Right. Everybody does you men understand that? Right. Don't be a grimy Negro. Our word meant something. because We told her that we were going to look out for her. Exactly. And then we came out and fulfilled it. Exactly. We don't? Verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Get Matthew 5, 16. Faith without works is dead, brother. So back to passive non-resistance against oppression. That's just chat, chat. Y'all was watching Kung Fu Panda. Y'all seen Kung Fu Panda number three? <laughs> and he's talking to the buffalo going, chit, chat, 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 chat. Tell him, you talk too much. Why don't you do something? So I saw I was laughing. So that's how we can't be like that on the street. Just talk, talk, talk with no works behind it. Come on, you got me? Yes, sir. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men 
that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. People got to see your works, brother. That means you got to show them by example. Not just chat, chat, chitty, chat, chat. You must show them by your example. That's why we said, let's get an institution, let's get a building. We went out and did it. And guess what? The party ain't over. This ain't what you see here is nothing. This is just a drop in a barrel. Our mind is going so many places about the things we want to accomplish and we will accomplish. But we all got to be of one mind or one accord, okay? Give me um, 2 Ezra 7, 24. 2 Ezra. Like they say, talk is cheap. You hate the white man? Okay. His system is wicked? Okay. What is your solution, brother? Uh... What have you set in place, brother, to correct the situation? Uh, yeah, you can insult them further. Say, what is your what is your solution, man, Mr. Man? What is exactly. your solution? Exactly. Sisters will do that. Sisters, yeah. when they want to get to get a man to get his business together, she said, What is your solution, Mr. Big Man? What you gonna do? <laughs> exactly. Now, got that for me, second Ezra 7, 24. But his law have they despised. And denied his covenants. And his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works. Y'all see that? By his, but his law have they despised. It's talking about Israelites. And denied his covenants. That's the old and new covenant. In his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works. Our works, brothers and sisters, begins with the keeping of the commandments. That's how it starts. And from there it builds into, give me some words. Everything. I like that. I use that word. It builds into everything. When you read the examples of Nehemiah, I love Nehemiah. He kept the commandments and he said, you know what? I got to show my works. I got to do something. I'm going to rebuild the walls. We're going to rebuild the temple. Their works were evident through their works. Their, work, their faith was evident through their works. Thank you. Right. When you keep the commandments, the Most High brings upon, the, upon those who keep it exponential growth. Mm-hmm. He exactly. starts opening up doors that you didn't even think of at the moment. Exactly. He said, but you just start by keeping my commandments. Because by keeping those commandments, it's going to cause your thinking to be right. If you condemn a black woman about always got her big behind showing, and you say, tell a black woman to cover her big black behind, have you created a dress code or an outfit for her right. to help her cover her big behind? You hear crickets. 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 Nothing. Exactly. You have done nothing. Exactly. But and condemn, it, condemn, exactly. condemn. We have to do better. But you understand where I'm going, right? All right, all right. Give me second as just nine and seven. Sister, you gotta cover your head. Okay, well, have you created something for her to cover her head? You waiting for the you waiting for the white man to do it. I know. That's that hey, Asaf, that's what it is. Right. We everybody's waiting for the white man to create it. Mm-hmm. Then we'll say, woman, get yourself right. right. But <laughs> we will not call, do it as men ourselves. Man. No. Exactly. You got that for me, Captain? Yes, sir. And every one that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works Uh and by faith whereby ye have believed. I want all you men and you sisters too. Let's read it again. And every one that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed. Just saying you believe is not going to save you, brothers or sisters. Your works... God wants to see your works because your works are an example to the rest of us. Your works must speak for your faith. You can't just say, I believe, I believe, I believe. Yeah, I believe I can fly. What's that song uh, uh, R. Kelly said? The hell is this? (laughs) Now, there's a book. Where's that book, y'all? Stop. uh, J. Carter G. Woodson. Where's that book? In 1933, listen good, Carter G. Woodson. Hold that book up. Abigail, you can put it on the screen. He wrote a book entitled Miseducation of the Negro. He told a profound story. I want Isaac, I want, to, I want you to go to page 167. And I want us to read down, and I want you to listen to what he says about black people. And when I say black, I'm talking about you Puerto Ricans. So I, don't want to, I'm, I ain't saying, you didn't say Puerto Rican, you didn't say any. I ain't saying all that. It's too much words. Black people. Anyway, <laughs> you want the highlighted part? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen good to what he says. Page 167. Such knowledge is especially necessary in the case of Negroes because of the fatal tendency toward imitation, not only of the white man, but the imitation of others in his own group. So he's talking about imitation, imitation of others in his own group. 
He's going to explain the mentality of black people. Watch what he says. For example, a Negro starts a restaurant on a corner and does well. Another Negro, observing this prosperity, thinks that he can do just as well by opening a similar establishment next door. The inevitable result is that by dividing the trade between himself and his forerunner, he makes it impossible for either one to secure sufficient patronage to continue in business. So both businesses fail. This is what brothers do. You open The example is a restaurant. You open up a restaurant, it's doing well. You see money coming in, people flourishing. He says, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to open up mine right next to you. Now everybody's divided between the two of us, so the money fails. Rather than open up on the other side of town where no restaurant is so that he does well and you do well. Black people, we our mind. He gets into the mentality of our people and we ain't right. The example is on White Plains Road. There's 10 Jamaican restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 10 Jamaican restaurants on one block. <laughs> exactly. Watch this. Did, did you want to yeah, I want to say something on that. Read that again, cause the whole thing? no, the, the well, there's a little, there's the section that I want. We, you was, I didn't want to stop you. I, when I hear things like this, I want to go into the depths of the Negro's brain. Read it again. Such knowledge. Y'all gonna figure out what I'm talking about. Such knowledge is especially necessary in the case of Negroes because of the fatal tendency toward imitation. Not only of the white man, but the, the imitation of others. The in his fatal imita the fatal imitation. What is it? The fatal what? Fatal tendency. The fatal tendency toward imitation. Towards imitation. Towards imitation. He's speaking about imitation. Why? Because Negroes are so afraid to do something, to be the entrepreneur, to be the first one to do it. They rather. See, oh, my brother built. He's he's got the business of the restaurant. Instead of him figuring out, well, we don't all just eat chicken. <laughs> we might we eat other things too. Well, why don't I build a different kind of restaurant? Why don't I go somewhere else and do something different? Because surely my people need more than one kind of business, but I'd rather imitate him because I'm too afraid to start something for myself. And emasculate that long word that you read earlier is him. Yes, yeah, us. Emasculated, scared to do, scared to do men. Yeah. And that's and and I say that because. Israelites are the same way. Yeah, I'm going. We back we up. we when we started to make moves like like we brought out in the video, joining Israel, uh, the organized nation. We've addressed that situation back then. We've come to a point where the nation has to go far further, and we got to the water's edge. We talk about being at the water's edge. Well, who's going to take the nation to the next level? And everybody's comfortable sitting until we decided. To move and get a building. Now everybody else is mad. Their purpose is not to go and build and do something else to help another uh, faction, uh, another faction of our people. No, they would rather tear us down. Crabs in the barrel. All of that's connected in what we're reading here. Yeah, yeah you know, like Deacon Isap was saying, and, and what Deacon Yao Isap was saying is the same thing. Now, when you're looking at even though into our site, you have many brothers doing T-shirt where there's other thing they can be doing. You understand? It's happening here too. You, you understand many t-shirts being being made when, when what about the woman clothes man like bishop c and alena well, what's the little baby stuff you put in the front the bib one z or whatever that may be man but you looking at that thing we doing it right now as we speak everybody want to do t-shirt what about the things of the woman their skirts the things that they need the thing that you understand everybody want to focus in one things lava even esau got enough sense to know don't open up two mcdonald's on one block don't open up two KFCs on one block. All of those franchises, Esau know you not opening up in this neighborhood, and they respect it. It's what's called. It's something in business that they call zoning laws. That's what. That's yes. what prevents that. The Negro don't go by no law, like the bishop pointed out. Mm -hmm. exactly. They just want to bite and devour each other. That's it. That's why when we were growing up, what they call it, you bite in my style. Right. right, right. <laughs> That's how the Negro is. Exactly. Isaac, read on. <laughs> in un page 167. In undertakings of great importance, the same undesirable tendency toward duplication of effort is also apparent. He said the undesirable what? The undesirable tendency toward duplication. The undesirable tendency towards duplication. Meaning I'm going to copy you, I'm going to copy you, I'm going to copy you. 
emulation. Go ahead. Of effort is also apparent. It has been a common thing to find two or three banks in a Negro community. Now, this was back in the day, so remember, that was written in 1933. Go ahead. Each one struggling for an existence and competing for the patronage of the small group of people, all of whom would hardly be able to support one such financial institution. These banks continue their unprofitable competition and never think of merging until some crisis forces them to the point that they have to do so or go into bankruptcy. See that? Only a crisis will make a Negro think right. Let's merge. Right. <laughs> We're about to go under. Exactly. The bank's about to take away everything. The, ne the Negro community then never has a strong financial institution with sufficient resources to stimulate the efforts of the businessmen who otherwise might succeed. The same short-sightedness has been evident in the case of the insurance companies organized by Negroes. One was established here and then another followed there in imitation of the first. We have been accustomed to boast that the Negroes have about 50 insurance companies in this country, marking the corners of the streets of the cities with large signs displaying what they are doing for the race. Now, he's right. This was right after Black Wall Street had popped up. Because when Black Wall Street, when they created that little, that nice, that community, there were different businesses. They didn't have everybody being an insurance company. They didn't have everybody was a supermarket. Everybody brought something different to the community which was necessary for the body. Go ahead. Instead of boasting of such unwise expansion, we should have received such information with sorrow. For what the race actually needs is to merge all of the insurance companies now supported by Negroes and make one good one. Such a step away from duplication would be a long stride toward our much-needed awakening. So at that time, because Esau was not insuring us, so Jake opened up insurance companies. So he brought up about there's a whole bunch he said, why don't you just make one insurance? Everybody merge together, and you can organize better that way. But he said, black people don't think like that. Everybody's about self. No, 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 I got to get paid. I got to get paid. So now it, it divides us. That's what he's going into. First Maccabees chapter 8, verse 16. This is the other nations. This is Esau doing this. Look what they did that black people lack, that Israelite men lack. And that they committed their government to one man every year who ruled over all their country, and that all were obedient to that them. what? And that all were obedient to that. Because one. the black man don't have no respect for nobody else. But it says these white people were all obedient to each other. Read on. And that there was neither envy. Neither what? Envy. Because that's what you see with the Israelite camps. It's envy amongst all of them. Read on. Nor emulation. Emulation. They weren't doing things to emulate each other. And that's what you see with a lot of the Israelite camps. You see new ones pop up. They copy one that they've been watching. They show no respect to them, and they just want to do it themselves. Right. You know what's a good example of that? I'm a, you how many of you brothers teach on the street? You ever teach on the street, and you'll see a nigga, a Negro, I'm oh, sorry, on a corner. He'll come over and then try to teach you. And meanwhile, this dude has never taught before, but because he see you teaching, now is his opportunity. I'm going to show you what I got. Y'all ever see that? He now he want to shine because he the, see you shine. It's yep. the same spirit. Y'all got to realize the spirits don't change much. They just do it in different ways, but it's the same scared spirit. He'd rather come and compete with us, but if we leave, he go right back to selling dope. That's right. That's why the exactly. scriptures say the spirit of emulation is evil. And you have Israelite camps that they just go out to emulate. That's why the Most High don't let nobody come to them. They teach for years and they just get 200, 300 views and that's it. Because that's an evil spirit to have. Where we at, Captain? Page 168. Go ahead. Such a step away from duplication would be a long stride toward our much needed awakening. Mm. And it would certainly give us prestige in the business world. That, that, that's heavy what he just said. Such a step from what? Such a step away from duplication. Stop. You got to let that. I'm, I'm going to be quiet after a while. Such a step from duplication. Now, you know what about duplication? When we go to other states, how many people always got beard cream? You ever notice that beard cream, hair cream? It's like a million sisters. Not that, I, not that we don't like it. We right. do. But every sister don't need to make beard cream. There it is. I asked a question in Atlanta. I said, all these women got babies. Where are the bibs for the babies? <laughs> There's so many things we could do. Who's making skirts? Where are our restaurants? It's easy. It's like, like, like I, I had a discussion at home. I said, listen, 
All you have to do is look throughout the nation and say, what do we need? And create it. Exactly. That's all you have to do. We need all kinds of stuff. There you go. Be the first to do it. Be the first. And that's what fear is most black and black people. Exactly. I don't want to be the first. I'd rather that's copy what you. you. Yes. Right. And that's what you just read there. That statement that you stopped on. Read that few S- words. Such a step away from duplication would be a long stride toward our much. Would be a long stride. That's showing you how messed up we are. If you just stop duplicating each other, trying to emulate each other, that will help the nation tremendously. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. Go ahead, Captain. Toward our much needed awakening. And it would certainly give us prestige in the business world. Hmm. This imitation and duplication are decidedly disastrous to economic enterprise as we can daily observe. There you go. Now get Sirach. Watch, watch what the Bible says. Sirach 29. I'm going to hit you in the head with this one. Sirach 29 and 19. Sirach 29 and 19. A wicked man transgressing the commandments of the Lord shall fall into shortership. Shortership meaning you got to pay back, right? Debt. Debt. Thank you. That's the word, debt. You You fall into debt. Now watch this. And he that undertaketh and followeth other men's business. And he that undertaketh and follows another man's business. For gain shall fall into suits. You shall fall into suits. Now let me give an example with that. Give me who got a business. Uh, okay, Deacon Malachi got a business where he uh, demolition. I'm not. A, I don't know nothing about demolition. But let's say I see him doing very well. I say, you know what? I'm going to copy him. I'm going to get my own truck. I'm going to do my own thing. Now we in comp- I'm in competition with him. Why would I do that? Then I don't know the business like he know the business. I end up in what's the word again? Read the bottom part. Suits. Suits mean a lawsuit. I might do something wrong because I don't know it like him. This is the the Bible tells you don't follow other men's business. It might not be your gift. That might not be your thing. Do you. Do your own business. The Bible tells us about that. And Bishop, the thing to do if you see Malachi prospering is what? What what should you do if you see him prospering? What? Support him. Or tell him, look, brother, I got money. I can invest. I, I can help you. I like your ideas. Is there a way that we can work together? And let him leave him as the boss and invest, because that's what Europeans do. They invest in each other's. The Negro mind don't know that. The Negro mind is always in competition. And it's a shame to see it in Israel, because y'all supposed to know better. What you, you know. well, what you basically hear is that the the Negroes in in Israel ain't no different from the Negroes that's out there in the world. It's the same spirit. They that's, haven't repented, basically. That's basically what you're saying. That drug dealer taking over the block, that's, what, that's how they are. They just start selling drugs right on the block right next to the other drug dealer. That's the mindset, because white people don't do that. They do things... Like we read, they have structure, they have order. They know I'm not going to collapse this man's business so I can make money. Hey, you see that in a movie like Scarface or Godfather. Yes. Where they have meetings. Okay, you sell your dope over there or yes. whatever. You, whatever they do. They space it out. Right. And that's in a carnal, wicked sense. And right. They, they still have sense to know if we try and go against each other, none of us will make money. Right. So they have meetings. And they respect each other. They respect each other's turf. Right, like in the movie um, Godfather, he says, uh, don't sell drugs in that area because there's children there. Sell to the niggas they have no soul. Exactly. <laughs> right. exactly. That's what he said. Sell to the niggas. Get First Thessalonians 4 and 11. And that ye study to be quiet. Study to be quiet. And to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. Y'all see that? So the Bible is all, all, all in the Bible is talking about business and work. And be quiet. Do your own, you, do your business, Okay. From there, get Romans 16 and 2, 1 and 2, about Phoebe. We always read about her. Romans, Romans 16, 16, 1 and 2, verse 1. I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is in Centria. Now, it's important for you to know that she was a servant of the church, meaning her business was for the church. It was in Israel. She, was, she didn't create a business for herself. Everybody understand that? For the selfish Negroes among us. Go ahead. 
that ye receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you. Y'all see that? Fish. So the Bible deals like that with business and all that. And we are all for everyone dealing business-minded. But don't duplicate and copy. and It's ridiculous. You're, it's self-defeating. Okay? From there, get me 1 Corinthians 12. So I asked the question we asked earlier. Everybody today is doing T-shirts. T I'm T-shirt out. I am T-shirt out. And that's only, how long do we wear a T-shirt for? One season or two? That's about, in the summertime, right? You wear T-shirts? Spring and summer? Uh, yeah, yeah, Bishop, by the way, I'm bringing my T-shirt out. You're bringing your T-shirt yeah, out? Yeah, Deacon Laba T-shirt. Okay, Deacon Laba T-shirt. Where's, where's the winter season clothing? Where's the fall clothing? Those don't exist? We don't walk around in the winter or the fall? You do T-shirt, I do T-shirt, he do T-shirt. We all do T-shirts. Yeah, cool. yeah. yeah. Where's the winter season clothing? Where's the fall clothing? Yeah. No, no hoodies? You don't need no hoodies? No, no, not at all. So where's the restaurants in each state? Where's our learning institutions for our kids? Where's our the skirts for the sisters, the head coverings? Um, where, are the, uh, where are the baby clothes? Right example. Now watch this, 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 7. There's so First, much work to be done. So, so much. much. And we've only touched the surface. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There's diversities of gifts, but the, we all got different gifts in here. Different know-hows, but it's the same spirit. Go ahead. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. We all have different administrations, but it's the same office. Go ahead. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. That's right. Go ahead. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Y'all see that? But the man, although we, we all got different gifts, it says the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with with all, I meaning it meant to profit the body. It's not a profit to the body if we're all making t-shirts. It's not a profit to us. Because now winter time comes, now what? Let's go back to the white man and get some winter clothes. Right. Profit with all, meaning that you have a holistic uh, supply of different things that will cover all of our needs. Exactly. Get First Corinthians. Not just the t-shirts. Exactly. Get Colossians 4 and 3. What I want y'all to understand that we are building a nation. Christ said the kingdom of heaven does not come with observation. Everybody understand that? Yes, Meaning we have to work for it. The teachings that we teach, like it says in Psalms, where it says their line shall go throughout the earth. What we're teaching, brothers, believe what I'm saying to you. This teaching shall go throughout the earth. If you think rape is going throughout the earth, it's not. God is going to shut that down. If you think... Not taking care of your kids and having five and six women is going to go throughout the earth. It's not. God is going to shut that down. What we are teaching is going to go throughout the earth. That's Believe right. me when I say that. Okay, everybody understand that? That's right. Get Colossians 4 and 3. Colossians 4 and verse 3. With all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bond. Y'all see what Paul says, that God will open up a door of, read it again, a door of what utterance he said? A door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds. As we teach properly, as, listen to this one, as we teach properly, God is going to open up doors of utterance to us in various cities, states, and countries. Listen good to what I'm saying, although some of you may not believe as we teach properly, the Most High is going to make sure the proper teaching goes throughout the earth and to benefit Israel and these other places. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 16 and 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. Paul was aware that as God opened up doors for him to teach in different states and cities and countries, Many adversaries rose up. You're going to have your assim assimil what's the word? Assimilationists. Your assimilationist Negroes rise up. You're going to have your envious Israelite Negroes rise up. There's going to be many adversaries against what we are teaching. You're going to see many videos against what we are teaching to condemn what we are teaching. Because why? It benefits the race. The resurrection of the 12 tribes. Ezekiel 11:16. Uh, 
So teaching the gospel is the first things, brother. I've gone, we've gone over many classes about teaching is the first thing. That's the foundation. Changing the hearts and minds of our people is the first and needful thing. Because what good is a million dollars to a drug addict? Is it any good? No. What good is a million dollars to an adulterer? It's no good. Or a thief. It's no good. Or a gambler. They're just going to gamble it all away. But when the mind is changed, when the mind is changed and is born again, say, so you know what? As an Israelite, I got to help my brother. I got to help my sister. I got to help my people. That's what they did in Acts 2 and Acts 4. They could not create a community until they were all on one accord. Okay, you got what I asked for? Yes, sir. Come on. Ezekiel eleven sixteen. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. So that's the prophecy of uh, This is why when we're traveling, the Most High is creating, opening up various sanctuaries in these countries. That's what's happening. And believe me, brothers, sisters, understand what I'm saying. That's the beginning. This, the teaching is the beginning. Setting up schools, that's the beginning. There's more that we have to get into until Christ returns. Now, if Christ come back tonight, oh, praise to the most high. But until that day, because Rudolph, the brother we spoke to, he said we got to do things until the Messiah returns. Right. Why sit back and be stagnant? Or another way, like you say, backslide, right. not do nothing, deteriorate under white su supremacy, and die. Why do that? Exactly. We can't. What did I say that was? Non. What did I say? Passive, non-resistant in our teachings, meaning you have no solutions to nothing. You're not doing nothing. You just chat, chat, chitty, chat, chat, chat with no solutions. On my own, guess what? I got solutions, but I can't do it by myself. We have to work together as a body, as a unit. And that deals with our other brothers in the other states, the other IUIC camps. That's what I'm talking I said the other IUIC camps. That's what I'm talking about, to work with them. So the sanctuaries are being set up. Now what? Remember we asked that before? Now what? Okay, I got the Bible. Now what are we going to do now? Scripture, just, just read, just read. No, it's more than just reading the Bible. We have to create, uh, we talked about building bridges two weeks ago. I didn't never finish that class. What we are doing is building bridges, creating a literal underground railroad. Absolutely. Nobody knew what I'm talking about. But this is what we're doing. We have to get into such things like imports, and exports. Farming. That's a level that nobody talks about. Farming. Some people in here might know about imports and exports. Why I got to buy over here when I can get deal with my brothers in Jamaica or Trini or these other states? Why can't we get and deal with things like that? Who's sitting up? Cause I, I believe you need a, uh, a license to import and export. Those of you that know about that, how about you look into that? Because nobody's talking about want a t-shirt. I just want to make a t-shirt. That's what you call fear. That's the that's that's the baseline of all of this. I'll duplicate him because I'm I have the spirit of fear to do other things. Now let me tell you what the devil did. The white man, your friend and mine, okay. our friendly neighborhood white man. I'll give you the story. I've told y'all a million times. You know the story. Y'all know the story. I'm at work. This is years ago when I did security, and an Edomite uh, uh, comes in and says, "Uh, is uh, I ain't gonna mention his name. I'll say, give me a name. Just make one up for me." Is Mr. Gringo in? I said, no, but his son is over there. You know who I'm talking about. Of course I know. And he runs to the Edomite, falls at his feet, hugging his legs, and the guy says, get off your feet, stand up. And he's like, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm like, what the hell is going on here? So the Edomite gets up, and as he's walking out, I go, hey. I grab his shoulder. Hey, hey, hey. I got to talk to this man. I said, what I got to talk. I, I had to here? know. I, inquiring minds want to know. I said, uh, what was that about? He says, do you know who that family is? I said, yeah, they own the store. He says, no, 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 no. no, no. It's, it's more than that. He said, this family, Edomites, he said, they organize all these various businesses, so-called Jews. They take 10% out of their business every month, or however they do it, he said, and they put it in a separate bank account. He said, by the end of the year, they are building houses to bring us over from Russia Germany. Are y'all listening to this? He's, that's how they got Eastern Parkway. That's how they go. And I'm sitting there like, wow. Now, really? Oh, Lord have mercy. This is gonna start. This is gonna start something. <sighs> the 
our minds are so sick. I'm talking about as as Negro, as black people, the Israelites. We have been miseducated into a particular sickness that is unreal. Where we concede the other nations do these things and it's not a problem. We expect it from them. I, actually, I have that written in this other book that I was looking at. We actually expect them to do these things because we expect greatness out of them. Mm. But if we did exact same thing that you said they did, our same brothers will say we sold out. Because, in other words, we don't have the intelligence to do what you just just point out. What, exactly. This was a, well, was a simple thing. And I know who he's talking about because we worked in the same place. That was a simple thing that these people did. And that's and you wonder, how is it that they bought up the whole strip of houses? They did it one by one doing that system. But why is it that we can't do that? We, how much we spend a year um, as a people? A one point something trillion dollars? Which is ridiculous. There's something seriously wrong with our heads. And, f and for, you have to, for us to have leaders of the Israelite community that don't know what to do and can't see how to put this together, there's a real sickness going on among them too. Y'all what's up? And the ones that you got to look at that should make you the sickest of them all are the ones that sit back and say we can't do it because the white man won't give us a loan. That's ridiculous. Those are the niggas that should make you the sickest because I've seen what we could do without the white man's money. I've seen it with my own eyes. When we give the call and we all come together just in small amounts in unity, what we can do. And that's what the bishop is trying to explain to you. We don't need their money. We don't need nothing from them. What we need is faith and unity and no emulation. Those three elements, we could do anything. We unstoppable. Have faith, have unity, and don't emulate. And we could pull off anything we put our mind to it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just looking at this building is the perfect example. What we can do. Look at just look at what you see. It took very little That's to pull right. it off. Okay? Oh, and we didn't push the envelope. Right. The, the bishop just was like, you know, don't go too hard. Because we was trying to go hard. The bishop had to say, fall back. It's taking time. Okay? And this was just to test the waters. And it's just at the same time, the Most High is showing us in steps what we are made of, what we can do. Speaking of emulation, Asaph, can you tell all the sisters that every sister in here can't sing? No. Can you tell them that? I'm sitting at Passover. I just got to bring this up. <laughs> Some of you sisters got beautiful voices. I love your voices. I love it. But some of you others who emulate, so she, she's singing, I'm going to sing too. And I'm hearing cat calls and yeah, 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 yeah. all kind of like, what the hell? Yeah, 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 Bishop, let me help you. Let, let me help you. Let I'm sorry, you. sisters. Yeah, I'm let, sorry. let me help you with that. Let me, it's a big difference. It's a big difference between when you in your bathroom and a shower. And when you're in front of Israel, it's a what, what, difference. When they turn the water off, yeah. right? When you bring, when you turn the water, <laughs> you don't have the water. You heard that steam. and the effects on the bathroom. <laughs> but it's just your voice. <laughs> that that means that as soon that you see, when you come up in there, you see we start looking at each other. You just hit the uh, hit your uh, the seat. Just go sit down. So in, in this truth, brothers, the most high is gonna he's going to elevate those who are teaching right. And we cannot be, we can't be like uh on I believe it's one of the interviews that Deacon Asaph did. What was that video with all of us? Um oh, the, um, the, anniversary? the anniversary where he said if there's another Israelite group yeah. who's doing better works, we will follow them. Right. We'll remember that Asaph, you said that? Yeah. Yes, that's and our I, standpoint. And I still stand by it. We will stand okay. by it. We are looking at all the camps. Who's taking the lead? Who's taking the initiative so we can follow their lead? Nobody. Feel and like you know what's crazy, Bishop? In the other camps, you got some good teachers. The only thing is they're undisciplined. They lack discipline. Mm -hmm. The things that we're talking about is now, I'm, I'm not knocking the camps because I look at them. And you have some good teachers. They just need structure. They need discipline. And they need guidance. Yeah. Yeah, you know that when we have our grand opening, Bishop, that we have other brothers come from different camps, you know, that come here to, to see our grand opening. But your guys are looking at that thing already too small. Look, look at that. Then that's not new brothers coming in. This is all New York. Mm -hmm. 
old Jersey. You understand, Deshaun, you, we have to do better things than this. Exactly. exactly. We're going to have, at, what, remember what you read earlier about a great door of utterance and there are many adversaries. What verse was that? It was in 1 Corinthians 69. Read that, read that. I just want to touch on crabs in the brow just for a second using this verse. 1 Corinthians 16 and 9. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. As God opens up the doors of utterance for us, brothers, there's going to be many adversaries who try to pull us down, who try to defame us, who try to humiliate us, try to ridicule us. Understand what I'm saying? So what you're seeing on YouTube is scriptural. Now I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read. That's gonna touch on what uh, Captain Isaac uh, just read out of that book and what the bishop just read. This is a book entitled uh, "Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome," and I want you to pay attention to the title of the book because what it acts, what it actually points to, is that the reasoning, of course, for breaking the Lord's law, but one of the curses that fell upon us was for us to have a particular syndrome that was born out of slavery because of our sins. And that thing carried all the way up to now, even with Israelite groups that claim that they have repented. I'm going to read some things out here to show you the same, and I'm, then I'm going to go into the Bible and show it to you again. Uh, this is on page 127, Post-Traumatic Slave Syndrome. It's written by the sister, uh, Dr. Joy DeGruy, or you can find her on the name Joy Leary. This is a sister that I've uh, been uh, checking out from for, for many years now. She's been on the uh, television scene for a while with this uh, information. Um, I'm going to read it. It says, we all know by, the, well, let me have Captain. Captain, you read this. Pass this to him. It's the highlighted, I want him to read the highlighted paragraph on page 127 and 128. Just what's highlighted. Pass that to him. Now, we're talking about crabs in the barrel. Listen to this. Then I'm going to read out the scriptures. Page 127. Mm -hmm. Another indication of vacant esteem is the effort to undermine the achievements of other African Americans. When he says vacant esteem, who knows what that term means? Vacant esteem. Anybody? Nobody? Captain Joshua? Vacant esteem. Self-esteem. Y'all know about self-esteem, right? When your self-esteem is vacant meaning you don't have any. It, it's, it produces a uh, particular uh, spirit in you where you are against your own self. You almost talk suicidal. You want to pull everything down. You, 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 you devalue yourself. So that's what he's saying. Read. We all know this by its euphemistic name, crabs in a barrel. Crabs in a barrel is a, is, a, uh, is a byproduct of vacant esteem, so you can understand. Go ahead. Whether we are talking about youth in school or adults in the professional world, they are those who seek to bring down those who look like them. Associated with this effort is the difficulty that many African Americans have in celebrating the successes of other black people, particularly those we consider to be closer to our own socioeconomic level. Are y'all getting this? So he's making a point that she she's making a point that we have a tendency to pull each to pull each other down who are viewed upon to be in the same class. Read that statement again, what you read earlier, the, the part that I'm addressing. Associated with this effort is the difficulty that many African Americans have in celebrating the successes of other black people. We will, we will celebrate the successes of other black people. It's using the term other to speak about people like Colin Powell, for instance. He's, seem, he's seemingly out of our reach. Or the, the, uh, some of our people, we cheer on Obama, so to speak, those just thinking on those levels. Those that are not from your community, so to speak, you figure that they're above you, so they would order, you automatically give them a pass. Read. Particularly those we consider to be closer to our own socioeconomic level. But if they're on our own level, we seem to pull them down. I'm showing you how Israelite camps roll. Go ahead. So many of us are typically very proud of people such as Colin Powell, Nelson Mandela, and the Williams sisters, whose achievements are seen as exceptional and perhaps out of reach. You got that? So it's going into the point I was addressing early. Read. Yet at the same time, there are those of us that have difficulty feeling positive about the promotion of a peer or friend. 
That's the point I want to get to peers or friends, people that are on your level. We don't want to see, in other words, our own basket, our own bucket. Yeah. Read. Um, that's it. Okay. So that part there is talking about how we deal on the peer group. Now, give me the scriptures. Watch this. Go to the book of, uh, then I'm going to give it back to you, Bishop. There's a lot in here, but I don't want to go too far with it. Go to the uh, chapter, First Peter chapter 4. Uh, let me get right to the point. Read verse 3 and verse 4. Listen. Can we read this? Go ahead. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 3. For Start the with verse 1. Let me just, 1 to 4. 1 to 4. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. This is about Christ. Go ahead. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. So but, this right here is, Christ is, Christ's example is supposed to be our example. Y'all with me? Come on, read. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. So now it's, making, it's, now it's talking about us. Go ahead. For what? For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. Now, I'm, the subject matter is about crabs in the barrel, right? We have all these Israelites, non-productive Israelites, brothers that don't want to do anything. Go ahead. Read it again. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatry. You will find these spirits in some of these Israelite camps, what we just read here. They have not repented. A lot of this stuff is going on with them. Read on. Wherein they think it's strange that you run not with them. The ye is talking about us. In other words, we broke away from that pack and went beyond the water's edge. Y'all follow me? Who sees where I'm going with this? Go ahead, read. Wherein they think it's strange that ye run not with them. Meaning, the you're supposed to be on our group. What are you doing? Doing going too much. What did he, what was the brother say? You're going too far. Why don't you take a break? You're leaving us. You're going too far with this. Go ahead. Wherein they think it's strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot. Cursing people out on the corners. The same madness that you see going on, they don't see that with us. There's a, there is a distinct difference between IUIC and the rest of how these other camps are rolling. But they all know that we all pretty much came from the same area. So that's the same thing that we were addressing earlier. The same, what, what was the words that he used? The same social, economic, and all that class. So as they see that we're breaking the mold, this, the crabs in the barrel, they speak evil, saying all kinds of things are trying to pull us back in it. They don't want that separation. They don't want to see us rise above this. Crabs in the barrel, read, read it, read that fourth verse again. Wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. And that's what they're doing, speaking evil of us because we've excelled. We've followed verses one and two, basically. That's good. Let's close it out with Luke 7, because this precepts what you were just saying, Luke 7, 31. This, this Luke 7, 31 is going to be one of my favorite uh, scriptures. Do we close it out? Luke 7, verse 31. And the Lord said, whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? And to what are they like? So Christ is about to insult the Israelite man, the black and Latin man. They are like unto children. Stop. He says the ch men, listen to what he's saying. The men of this generation are like children. Mm. Children. Emasculated children. That's you. Yeah, that's an insult for you. Yes. You know? Big time. Go ahead. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. You know how kids try to get other kids to play with them? You had these kids, grown men who act like kids trying to get Christ right. to play with them, meaning debate with me, right. argue with me, right. say what, teach what we teach. Right. Christ said, debate, yeah. Christ said, I'm not rolling like that. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ.
YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.